benefits the people, use that. Don't just cut and paste anything and just throw anything at people. All right, have some wisdom, win them to your side, and the best thing is with neighbors. Show them some concern, show them consideration. Uh, when you make some kind of a food, it's nice, pass it on to them. Say hello, say this, say that, help them. And when they see this kindness from you, then slowly you are able to give them da'wah. For character of Islam is da'wah in itself. And then you can use your verbal uh, comments with them. For example, I had a neighbor who sees me wear these. You know, I come out of my house wearing this outfit every now and then. He's a Christian Lebanese. When we first got to meet him, it was, hello, how are you? Talking about Lebanon, talking about this, talking about, you know, common things. Having a cup of coffee together. And then one day, the neighbor said to me, whatever you are on, stay on your religion. Stay on your iman. And I'm wondering why he said that. He saw the peace and the serenity in this outfit and in the character that we showed him. So then I was ready to give at least a hint about our deen. And the first thing I say to them is, you know our Quran says that you are from the people of the book. And to Ahlul Kitab. You are the people of the book. And that is because we share some commonalities in the books. And so we went into a small discussion. Next time, inshallah, we're going to a bigger discussion. But Yusuf alayhi salam, this is what Allah is telling us. Earn the trust from the people and then give them da'wah. And the first thing you start off with is what? Issues pertaining to tawheed, to Allah and to his words. So you don't go ahead and start with talking about, for example, uh, you know, pork or wine unnecessarily. Or talk about the beard straight away. Why don't you get everything and return it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as Yusuf salam said, everything I know is from Allah. So now introducing him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After telling him these things, he was ready to interpret their dreams for them. Now he's taken the responsibility off his shoulders and given it to them in clarity. Now Allah mentions a few verses about it, but obviously they went into a long discussion about Allah and Tawheed. Then when they were ready, Yusuf salam gave them the promise. He helped them with what they wanted of less importance. يا صاحبي السجن أما أحدكما فيسقي ربه خمرا وأما الآخر فيصلب فتأكل الطير من رأسه قضي الأمر الذي فيه تستفتيان O fellow prisoners, as for one of you, he shall pour wine for his master and as for the other, he shall be crucified and the birds shall eat of his head the matter whereupon you inquired is decreed. Not only did he tell them the interpretation of, of their dreams, but he also told them again, what the dream that you have seen is from Allah. He has decreed this matter. There is no changing it. I cannot advise you anymore. Allah has made qadr, things that are going to occur for a reason, and some things we have no control over. We submit to Allah and we try our best in whatever we have control over. And truly, they did become that. The first prisoner was taken out and he was crucified and the birds ate from his head. Some say they became Muslims, Allahu A'lam. The second prisoner was saved out and truly he became the wine, I don't know what you call it, the wine preparer of the Pharaoh, of the king, the Pharaoh. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing things closer and closer for what has been destined for Yusuf alayhi salam in the former dream he saw when he said, I saw... 11 planets or stars and the sun and the moon prostrating to me. The dream has not yet been fulfilled right up to this point. All of what has occurred is, in, is going in line with what is about to come from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he saw the next prisoner leave, He said to him, Mention me to your master. Idhkurni inda rabbik. Mention me to the king and tell him that I am imprisoned without any crime or wrong. Can you tell your king that, please? Because the king doesn't know my state. And this verse, my brothers and sisters, is indicating to us the supporting evidence that we are allowed to seek help from people in means other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and that it is not contrary to the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I said other than Allah, I didn't mean that your heart is not connected to Allah. You ask a friend for help, but you know that he cannot or she cannot help you if Allah doesn't will it. So long as you have that belief, you're allowed to ask people for help, so long as those people are able to help you, like it's within their power. You don't come and ask a person and say, please forgive my sins. This is not in the power of any human being. This is only in the power of Allah. So doing that is shirk. But you come and ask a person who is a doctor, can you please advise me of medicine and administer your uh, work on me so I may be cured? This is allowed. Because Allah is the one who gave the ability to a doctor to have some control in that way. But you must always know deep inside that if it wasn't for Allah, the doctor cannot heal you any, anyway. And if Allah doesn't want to, the doctor cannot heal you. If you have that, you're okay. But seeking things from people that they cannot help you with, flying, forgiveness, making you enter paradise, saving you from hellfire, it's only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua and so on and so forth. When he asked the friend to ask the king to mention him, the shaitan made Yusuf alayhi salam, made the prisoner forget what Yusuf alayhi salam had asked him. Now, yes, the shaitan made him forget. But at the same time, Allah allowed it to be. You see, the shaitan has no power over the prophets. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, allowed for the shaitan to make the prisoner forget what Yusuf alayhi salam asked him to do. The scholars tell us there are two reasons for that. The first and foremost reason is that there is the will of Allah, a wisdom that Allah wants to bring about from it. Only Allah knows the wisdom in that. The second one, the scholars say, that based on a narration, that Allah alayhi it's sahih or not, but the narration is there, that when Yusuf alayhi salam asked the prisoner to mention him to his king, Jibreel alayhi salam came to Yusuf alayhi salam in the prison, and he said to him, Ya Yusuf, when your brothers threw you in the well, who is the one that saved you? He said, Allah. He said, when you were taken into slavery, who is the one that chose good masters for you? He said, Allah. He said, when the women seduced you, who is the one that saved you from it? He said, Allah. He said, what prevented you from asking Allah now again? Although it's allowed to ask others, the prophets are a little bit different. They ask Allah completely and sincerely. And obviously Yusuf Salam did have that in him. But Allah had a wisdom from it to show Yusuf Salam something which Yusuf Salam can understand. Allah says in the Quran, فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِضْعَ سِنِينَ And so he remained in the prison for several more years. Another lesson that we can get out of it is, Allah wills things and we sometimes cannot understand why. And we may suffer a little bit more. This suffering is good for us. The prophets are a role model for us. If you think that you've gone through a lot of pain and it's been a long time, look at Yusuf alayhi salam. And remember the reason why Allah is telling the story to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. He was going through a lot of pain for a long while. So he's telling him, look what happened to Yusuf and he was patient. And I'm giving you this to 